let's talk about World of Tears Volume 1 by Philip Jose Farmer. Uh, this consists of the books Maker of Universes, The Gates of Creation and A Private Cosmos. Uh, these are the first three books. There were seven books in the World of Tears published between 1965, which is basically when these were published. These three uh, were 65, 66 and 67 and 1993. There's a second trilogy after this and there's one sort of standalone, I think, from what I understand. I haven't read it. So, you know, there we are. Uh, it, that was 1993 and comes after the two main trilogies. The uh, Yeah, this one. And what's the blurb? Let's have a look. Mm. So begins, there's a description of something. So begins Robert Wolfe's incredible adventure into a universe where world upon world is tiered into the glassy landings of a cosmic skyscraper. And he would ascend those steps from creation to creation, passing through lands of green skies and fabled beasts of beauty and brutality. For the many-leveled universe had been carefully constructed as the ultimate test of his purpose. Only by crossing the perilous gates of creation and enduring the many torments that threatened his total destruction could he attain the superior state of self-knowledge that he so craved. Uh, so basically, Maker of Universes starts out with uh, amnesiac, uh, childhood amnesiac Robert Wolfe um, being thrown uh, while looking in a suburban built new build in 1960s Arizona, he's thrown uh, through a wardrobe. He sees another universe and a cheeky looking fellow uh, who we learn is called Kikaha throws him a horn, a magical scientific horn with which he is able to travel to um, a universe which has tears. The world of tears itself. There are other places you see in this, but the world of tears itself is a four or five layered, five layered uh, universe world with more surface area than Earth, uh, but which goes up in cake layers. Uh, the bottom, Okeanos or the garden, is this sort of mock Garden of Eden pop, uh, populated by uh, Greek uh, descendants of Greeks and Greek legendary beasts. Uh, then the next level is Amarind, which is the Great Plains and um, Mesoamerica, classical Mesoamerica. Uh, then uh, you have Drakenland, which is medieval Germany, Atlantis, which is Atlantis, uh, sort of, and then you have the Lord's Palace and Wolf to get to find out what's going on and uh, to um, defeat uh, those who would destroy him as he's been transported to this strange land he, he knows nothing about. Uh, he has to ascend and, uh, and find out. Uh, there are other places that you find out about in the trilogy. There is particularly a universe, oh, sorry, a solar system of many micro worlds um, of strange character with unique characteristics. Um, but yes, uh, it is, um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty varied in terms of its terrain and that's a big appeal of it. Basically, I think the summary is this, and I think it, most, most of it I think can be summed up quite quickly. The first book, Maker of Universes, isn't actually particularly strong. Uh, Farmer had been writing for a little bit by this point. He wasn't completely new to the task, uh, but uh, his style is never amazing and it's at its worst in Maker of Universes. I just mean solecisms, ugly sentence starts, even sometimes just grammatically incorrect uh, sentences. Uh, there are problems kind of throughout of uh, how um, I, basically, I suppose some people would have issues, we'll put it this way, some people will have issues with how uh, women particularly are characterised, but, um, and, and I certainly uh, didn't always love how that was done. Some of it, though, is full, is Farmer replaying and remodulating the pulp genre, and one thing, it helps you to understand when he explicitly calls out at one point the Barsoom books, because he's got, you know, a character from Earth, etc., they would be like, oh, Barsoom. Uh, the fact that there is an intentional takeover of the Barsoom books and of Conan, things like that, of these adventurers. And I mean, I think uh, uh, the most obvious uh, forerunner would be someone like um, Burroughs. Uh, it's not planetary romance in feel, though it has occasional moments of it, but it definitely, in terms of those characters coming out of that genre, Burroughs is a good comparator. Burroughs is, is less, um, frankly, I mean, because Farmer is writing in the 60s, uh, and he's not quite new wave, but he's just around and next to the new wave. There's just a degree of sort of experimentation with nihilism and with edgy stuff. 
And in that sense, I think I, I prefer Burroughs. Some people might prefer this, ironically. Characterization, some people really slam. Basically, if you accept there are two characters you really get to know well. Well, I said that there's two characters you, re uh, you really get to know well, and then three or four, you do actually get characterizations of that are meaningful. You get to know Wolf, and you get to know uh, Kikaha. Um, and uh, there's other characters you also get to know uh, in the more in the second and third books, um, particularly. Uh, but they are secondary. As long as you accept that it's a pulp, th these are 150 pages each. These are pulp novels uh, where a character goes around and the pacing is rapid, sometimes too rapid for my taste. I think sometimes he could dwell on what's going on a bit more, particularly earlier on, um, particularly in Maker of Universes. And uh, yeah, if you accept that, it doesn't bother you too much. You, you, you compare it to the genre it's intentionally following in. Basically, though, I think the point is that even in that context, there are some interesting twists on the pulp characters, but uh, it is a decline from the height of pulp. That said, Gates of Creation, I enjoyed a lot more than Maker of Universes. I thought it was actually decent. And a Private Cosmos, maybe a step up again to like almost quite good. So, you know, if Maker of Universes is two ish stars, it was okay to read. I didn't hate it, I, it just wasn't great. Gates of Creation and Private Cosmos are three, three and a half. Uh, I did enjoy them, and I was left at the very end of uh, A Private Cosmos, wondering, thinking, ah, this has just left enough that I'm almost interested in reading the second trilogy. Some people say the second trilogy is a decline. I haven't looked at the stats, I don't know, but, you know, I'm not currently thinking I'm going to continue. But there was just enough there that I thought, maybe I would, maybe I'd find out more. There's a couple of points, a couple of comparisons to make. One is that, and this is at the start of Private Cosmos, there's an introduction by Roger Zelazny, uh, who loved these books and who was open about the fact they inspired uh, Chronicles of Amber, which is early 70s. This is mid-60s, mid Chronicles of Amber, early 70s, the idea of a family, uh, because that's the thing that uh, the people who created these are the lords, these sort of immortal humans. And one of the ideas explored is about what does functional immortality lead to and what does high technology that's not well understood lead to. Uh, but yes, uh, inspired that idea of this f a family of near immortals or immortals creating universes or at least manipulating universes that are parallel. These are more pocket than parallel. They're not also oh, slightly different. It's a whole new creation. But it is an inspiration. Chronicles of Amber is better than this, though if you if you wanted an even pulpier twist on that idea, this isn't a bad place to go. And the other thing is uh, that there are things uh, basically, when you find out about the father of the main group of lords, Urizen, um, and this na the kind of these trapped, these pocket dimensions that often have lots of traps and puzzles, this is just missed. At least Gates of Creation, uh, which plays with those ideas, is pretty much missed. Um, it's uh, the game, that is to say. Uh, I, I haven't actually checked I meant to, but uh, it almost certainly has to be an explicit influence on those games, uh, which start off, of course, with the father. Um, having disappeared and two sons trapped trying to convince you to solve the puzzles to release them on this pocket world while you can go through into different places and so on and so forth at least from Miss 2 you can literally go through to different places but different themed areas you know these pocket universes that are created by these lords in Mist. so yeah I enjoyed World of Tears I didn't I didn't hate it I didn't find it disappointing or, or grim um, I didn't entirely like the attitude, I thought that the style was weak, uh, but it was not a bad way to pass time, and it was pretty easy reading. It wasn't sort of turgid mess, rapid enough you got through, and by the end it got to the point of me actually thinking, this is pretty decent. Anyway, if you've read them, tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.